Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session, Future Ready Chefs, Culinary Career Pathways for Job Ready Graduates. Thank you to the American Culinary Federation and Core Learning Exchange for coming together to engage us in this exciting topic. Good morning, my name is Dr. Sheila Herity, and I'm the proud superintendent of Montachusett Regional Vocational Technical School. We're located in Fitchburg, Mass. Massachusetts, and we're the second largest regional vocational school in Massachusetts, uh, servicing 18 communities all the way to the New Hampshire border. Previously, I was the principal of Worcester Technical High School, located in Worcester, Mass. And it, at the time, was the lowest performing vocational school in our city and one of the poorest performing vocational schools in Massachusetts. And in seven short years, I'm really proud to say, um, we transform, transformed it into a national model where we became a national US Department of Ed Blue Ribbon School. And we got the attention of President Obama where he selects one high school in the entire country to deliver the commencement address. And he selected Worcester Technical High School to come to our school and uh, commend our students and our community for coming together for uh, amazing uh, career in tech ed school. But enough about me, um, let's get right into it. For to start, let's just go through a few housekeeping items before we get started. We'd love to hear from you. As you have questions during this presentation, please type them into the, the chat box and let us know which speaker you're, you're posting your question to. We're reserving time for your questions in the last quarter of today's session. Second, a recorded version of this webinar will be available. In the next several days, you'll receive a link to access this webinar on demand, as well as any additional materials that are referenced. Third, join us on Twitter. You can follow the American Culinary Federation at ACF Chefs, and that uh, link is being dropped in the Dropbox chat right now. You can also follow Core Learning Exchange at Core LX, and that too is being dropped in the Dropbox. And we're also using the hashtag today hashtag future ready chefs. We encourage social sharing during each and every one of our live sessions. So without further delay, I'd like to introduce today's panelist. Please meet Chef John Shop. Chef Shop has a CEC, CEPC, CCE, CCA, AAC, is the commission chair of the American Culinary Foundation Federation, ACF as it's known, certification commission, and one of the only chefs in the world to carry five major ACF certifications. Welcome, Chef. Thank you, Dr. Harry. It's great to be here. ACF is the standard of excellence for chefs and the largest professional chefs organization in North America, with more than 14,000 members belonging to belonging to more than 170 chapters in four regions across the United States. Today, ACF is the leader in offering educational resources, training, apprenticeship, competitions, and programmatic accreditations designed to enhance professional growth for all current and future chefs and pastry chefs. The next chef that is a panelist today is Chef Ashton Garrett. Chef Garrett is the ACF Young Chefs Club President and the Senior Culinary Arts Manager at Marriott International. You may recognize Ashton as the winner of the Food Network's Guy Groceries Games, Season 23, Episode 9, America's Next Chef. Welcome, Chef Ashton Garrett. Thank you, Professor Harity. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And the next chef is that I'd like to introduce is Melinda Barros. She has a CEC, CCA, French chef, celebrity chef, farm to table chef, executive chef of Hickory Hills Country Club in Springfield, Mass. Welcome, Chef Barros. Barros. Thank you, it's Missouri too. Thank you, Sheila, it's nice to be here. I apologize for that. No worries. Finally meet Jeff Katzman, a 20 plus year ed tech visionary and serial entrepreneur developing equitable pathways to career credentials. Jeff is the CEO of Core Learning Exchange, a digital turnkey solution for career and tech ed programs for middle and high schools 
as well as community colleges. The Core Learning Exchange platform offers courses such as those provided by ACF that lead students to earn industry recognized credential pathways to higher paying, high demand careers that require neither a four year degree nor the associated student loan debt. Welcome, Jeff. Good morning and thank you. Nice to be here. Right. So the first thing that we'd like to do is um, allow the attendees to get to know you. We have, um, as you can tell, um, a wealth of knowledge here as panelists and uh, quite frankly, celebrities amongst us. And um, the first question that I'd like to pose uh, to the panelists is, let's start by talking about your passion. Where did your passion to cook come from? And when did you know you wanted to become a chef? I open that to anybody that would like to feel the first question. Fila, I'll go first. Um, great. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a great question. And uh, passion is something, one that you cannot give to another person. Uh, you either have it or you don't. And it's uh, such a blessing when um, you hire a young cook and they have that passion. You can see it, you can work with that. And uh, for me personally, my grandmother, um, Amelia Sindahar was my hugest influence and was a very passionate woman about many things. One being cooking. And she really um, taught me a lot of things. And um, how to be a, a wonderful cook, uh, a great mother, a great wife, and just a, a good worker. So I, I give her credit for that. And um, yeah, is there a second question? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when did you know you wanted to become a chef? That one, yeah. Um, <laughs> probably when I was um, in my late teens, um, I always enjoyed cooking as a young person and um, in high school, I would make sandwiches for my for my friends at school and take orders and would sell sandwiches at school um, for a little cash in my pocket. And uh, that ultimately, I was kind of the friend that was the cook in my group. So it just built onto one day thinking I should go to chef school and, and I did that. And so that was, that was quite a long time ago. Great, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I'll jump in on, on that um, next in line if you guys want. Um, very um, similar story to Chef Burroughs. Um, for me, it was my mother that was my inspiration. Um, um, learned a lot of things from, from both my parents. My mother had a passion for cuisine. Um, age seven was when I distinctly remember wanting to be a chef. And back, that was early 70s. So a, a while back, um, food TV was, um, in fact, TV was quite different. Media was quite different than it is today. Right. So um, it was um, Graham Kerr, the Galloping Gourmet, and Julia Child um, that really, and films like uh, Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory and a, um, a couple others that sparked my interest. And I found that um, mainly it was the ability to heal, bring people together, make people smile, make people laugh. Um, that connected the dots with cooking for me. Um, I went on, I never went to culinary school. Um, formally, I did later in life. Um, I started working in restaurants and my parents encouraged me to go to the University of Kentucky and get a bachelor's in business administration management, um, which I did and it was a great experience. And then um, I've kind of um, informally apprenticed along the way until I got later in life, I picked up Chef jobs. And then I started coming back to the table and um, wanting to kind of validate my skill sets later in life after running some clubs and kitchens um, against my peers that did go to culinary school. And, and that's when I um, um, started getting interested in ACF certification. And I fell in love with it. And I feel that our nation um, is starting to understand vocational training. I, I think we're at a, a, an interesting um, point in the road. Um, I still believe um, formal education doesn't quite understand what to do with us. Mm. Um, and um, to me, certification, I'm passionate about that. And being on both sides of the fence of, of education, I think all education is important and lifelong learning is important. Um, and as the chair of the um, ACF Certification Commission, we're passionate about trying to battle our way up to equating certification to formal education. And right now we have a white paper that um, 
equates hour for hour our certified culinary educator to the equivalent of a master's in teaching technical education. And my school president um, at my community college here in um, Rona, Virginia, and um, people underneath are actually um, discussing this up at the chancellor's level. So we're hopeful they're behind it. They said it's about time. You know, we um, uh, understand what this technical education and vocational education is. Um, you can see it out there. I wish somebody might have told me what a um, welder or plumber made when I was in high school back in the 70s, because that would have been a great career path um, for me, too. So um, that's kind of the story. I've enjoyed the entire long trip. And at 55, I just turned a couple of weeks ago, 7 to 55, got in the kitchen when I'm 16. Um, I know about this much of what there is to know in this profession out there. <laughs> it's a very broad profession. So I would just suggest to anybody in it, there is no finish line. Enjoy the race. Um, embrace continue, continuous learning and put your ego to the side. There's always going to be somebody in the room that knows something more than you right. or does something a little better than you. So just work on yourself and move on through and enjoy the journey. Thank you for sharing. I guess um, I finish up. Um, so certainly, you know, I, I kind of started uh, early in life. So much like Chef Shop and, and Chef Burroughs, you know, starting early. So first, I must say it's, it's an honor to be a part of such a distinguished panel with a, such a wealth of knowledge. So thank you all for having me. So uh, I, I began when I was three years old. I, I started with a play set. My parents got me a play set, like a, like a little tykes. And I remember just making imaginary pancakes and flipping imaginary bacon and, and presenting it to my parents and say, daddy, daddy, eat this or, or mommy, you know, how does this taste? So I, I you know, my passion started really, really early. Um, and they saw that I had a knack for it and a true comfort and a natural ability to be in the kitchen. Um, much like, you know, anything for a profession, they, there's a safe haven and the kitchen has always been a safe haven, a comfortable place for me and where I, you know, exist but the most purpose and passion within my profession as well as in my life. So I think graduated to an easy bake oven. I like to tell people not a lot of young chefs, you know, know what an easy bake oven is. You know, so oh, yeah. some of the some of the panelists know what that is. Um, and that was a tremendous experience. I, I love every second of it. I can actually kind of recall the smell of the brownies and the cookies that we used to make and the pastries. So uh, and then uh, I went to a vocational high school. And I think that's that's really where you know the professionals uh, since began. Um, you know, learning how to wear a chef coat and understanding the meaning of a chef code and understanding the meaning of a tope and really being professional in every sense of the word. Um, and then moving on to culinary school at Johnson Wells University. But it was that experience in high school, you know, making peanut brittle, um, excuse me, pistachio and white chocolate caramel peanut brittle. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite, all-time favorite desserts and really just emulating the smell and, and just smiling the entire time while making it and saying like, this is what I want to do. So I started early, early for me and I've just stuck at it for the, uh, soon will be the last 20 years. I'm 23 right now. So um, it's been a 20, 20 year journey and I hope to continue and hope to hopefully inspire other young chefs and chefs alike to be a part of it. So uh, that was kind of my beginning and, and just want to continue and to learn as much as possible. And as Chef Shop said, you know, there is no end or there is no finish line. And I, I'm blessed enough to learn that uh, early on um, from chefs like, you know, Chef Shop and Chef Burroughs and the ACF community. You know, really just be a sponge and absorb so much knowledge. There is a wealth of knowledge. Um, and I'm sure any panelists can attest to this when I say that, you know, this industry is, is a brotherhood and sisterhood. You know, somebody knows somebody who knows somebody else. So the networking aspect, as well as the educational and certification aspect are vitally important. So um, that's kind of my story. And, and I look forward to hopefully connecting with anybody who, uh, who wants to continue on their journey within the culinary industry. Thank you for sharing. As you were starting to describe uh, what you were liking to make, I was like, oh, geez, it's so close to lunch right now. You're making me <laughs> hungry. <laughs> and just to, to add to that, being um, a superintendent and spending over 20 plus years, um, specifically in vocational education, in Massachusetts, we have 26 different um, regional vocational schools. And almost all of our 26 um, vocational schools have waiting lists because uh, people really are starting to understand uh, the value of uh, vocational and career in tech ed and that the importance of establishing um, and exposing students at a, a younger age. You know, people, if you're an audience member uh, now, uh, the earlier you can expose students to career in tech ed and in, especially in the culinary area, 
this is a wonderful way to expand those opportunities and provide that access so students can have that awareness and start earning those credentials uh, towards their career path. So the, the next question I have actually is specifically to Jeff. You're a serial entrepreneur and your passion is now developing equitable pathways to career credentials. Why equitable pathways and why now, Jeff? Um, well, I, I think, you know, listening to, the, to each of the chefs understand sort of that, you know, it, they're, they're, they were able to identify a passion and be able to pursue that passion led to a fulfilling career and something they're really engaged in. And um, when I began the company, we were looking out at sort of, you know, this imbalance in the workforce where most kids are being tracked and there was uh, a preference to kind of push kids through a college track. And that, you know, clearly looking at the macroeconomic kind of data that's out there is a failed approach because we're creating overqualified, you know, workers and people that have master's degrees and bachelor's degrees that are working at Starbucks. And then we have uh, the students that are sort of tracking toward the higher, the higher skills. There's a glut of uh, overskilled employees and really what where, where the sweet spot is, is in that middle skill careers where um, they don't necessarily require a four-year degree to go out and make a really good quality of life. And we see this as, as um, some of the chefs were saying, it's really, um, we, our goal was really to kind of destigmatize sort of the, 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 an alternate pathway as an alternative to, to a four-year degree, to degree and be able to, at a very early age, and I see this in my own kids, uh, be able to identify what their passions are, what their interests are. And when someone has voice and choice in their education and they are seen for their natural talents and those natural talents can be developed and used to engage students in learning, uh, you're gonna have better outcomes in every scenario. And, and I think that those you know, statistics that are out there about uh, how students that do engage in CTE have better outcomes than their peers in both uh, life and, and graduation rates in high school and graduation rates in college and better outcomes in their financial life. And so, you know, my goal was really to kind of, how do we create a scalable way of providing uh, students opportunities to recognize their natural talents pursue them and go out and get re rewarding careers. And our partnership with ACF is, um, is, is, is one of uh, our crown jewels, really. Uh, we love working with ACF. Um, you know, their courses are offered through our platform uh, to out, out to um, CTE programs in high school, middle school, high school, community college. And, um, you know, we really want to empower um, those students to be able to realize their dreams and and get to a good quality of life and that's that's the the why i started the company and what our our mission is and what we're doing that's great thanks you know as an educator with 30 plus years experience when you're talking about core learning exchange and career tech ed and credentialing uh, i've seen firsthand you know way too often students are going from class to class every time the bell rings and they sit there for 45 minutes, memorize, regurgitate and potentially forget. And they just keep moving from class to class. And uh, especially being in career tech, you just see the light uh, turn on with the students. They now understand um, what they're learning and the reasons why they're learning it because they're applying it to a passion and a love. Um, especially right now, as we're talking about culinary arts, the transferable skills with the math, science, nutrition, and health um, are, are just fantastic. And it really inspires uh, students to reach their full potential. So my next question, question is, why are industry credentials such as those from ACF so important? Chef Chuck, would you like to uh, take this one first? I would love to, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm a, a full-time culinary educator. I'm also, um, um, have um, a, a catering company too. So I'm in industry and in, in education. 
And um, I see our graduates and I um, travel the country and I see other culinary programs and graduates, both at secondary, post-secondary level. And that's great. That formal training is great, but um, there is also um, an apprenticeship path and just a, a person that may have learned um, from good informal teachers um, and certification allows those individuals from kind of um, the bottom of the ladder all the way up to um, a master chef level, which I don't think that our country fully understands what a ACF certified master chef is and, and how difficult that credential is to attain. Um, certain schools um, equate that to the equivalent of dual um, PhD um, degrees and um, 40 years of on the job training. Um, there's only 72 currently in the US, but I digress. Anyhow, um, certification um, takes um, a culinarian and for a potential employer um, verifies that they have an educational experience, verifies that they have this base bone knowledge, um, verifies that they are current in um, nutritional understanding, um, sa safety sanitation, um, and HR management, because that's a big piece of it. And then it applies on top of that, a practical examination and a written examination and wraps that all up in a nice bundle for a potential employer to now say, this is somebody I might want to interview. Um, does it mean that everybody that is a certified sous chef is ready to be a sous chef? That depends on the property uh, that you're going to. Um, and then I would say an ACF accredited culinary program, um, post-secondary, um, gives you the credential of a certified culinarian. So I think our, our country and industry and even um, formal education goes, oh, I want to hire a culinary student. Well, they're a certified culinarian. And, and like any students, um, all students are different. The ones that um, gravitate to the curriculum and do their homework and do their studying um, may come out and be an actual better student. Um, just because somebody graduated from a certain college or university doesn't mean they're a great employee. So what ACF certification does on top of that, it verifies that skill sets. And then through continuous education and repeated practical and written testing gives a kind of a, a seal of approval, a stamp out there to let people know where you are. So to me, um, I look at a culinary graduate from a prestigious private school or one of our fabulous public post-secondary schools um, and that says one thing, what certification on top of that says is here's somebody that's gone above and beyond that associate's two-year degree. And also it shows me a person that is um, willing to roll up their sleeves and invest in themselves. They're willing to do the work to prove that they're um, more into the game and better prepared than the people standing to the left and right of them. And to me that as, as an employer, um, that's the type of employee I want. I'm going to teach them my specific technical things, how I want my bread baked or creme brulee made or chicken roast or whatever. And that's great that they have a baseline knowledge. Um, what I can't teach, I can um, encourage and prop up is, is um, I think it was Chef Burroughs who said um, that, that, that passion um, somebody that's stepping in and that wants to do this. And to me, certification kind of shows that because it's not an easy process. I mean, we see many people that think it is and they step into the arena unprepared, like some students tend to do. And, um, and they fail and then they hide from that. Um, they go, oh, this, this certification thing, I don't need it and it's ridiculous. And they run from it. Um, instead of internalizing, maybe I wasn't prepared, maybe I didn't seek out the proper mentors, Maybe I didn't practice like I should, do my homework. Um, and, and then they go off in, into the industry. I have yet to see a professional culinarian that has started to climb the certification ladder that doesn't value um, that journey, value the credential and um, value their current position in the industry. It tends to be the naysayers on the other side of the fence that don't participate. So mm -hmm. that's my thoughts on that. Yeah, thank you for sharing. That was fantastic. Um, would either the uh, other two chefs like to add a, additional information or comments or Mark? Sure, I'll, I'll jump in, Sheila. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I mean, how do you follow up with the uh, certification ah, here? Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I do want to say that um, having holding 
for example, an executive chef title without the letters after your name is sort of in name only. When you add those letters, it tells others that you sort of a subject matter expert. You have, you've gone through a process to earn that because you do earn these letters. They're not given to you. Mm -hmm. um, and it is um, a, a commitment and it takes dedication. And you, know, you may have a, a full-time job on top of trying to certify and where do you, you make time to practice on your days off and you know, all those things. Um, so it takes, it takes a lot of work and, and discipline um, in this industry absolutely requires discipline in all areas of your life, not just, it's in the little things. You know, if you can't be disciplined in the little things, how do you expect yourself to be disciplined in the big things? That's what I, what I tell myself. I mean, exhibits your dedication to your craft, um, the fundamentals of cooking, which, um, you know, there's a lot of hotshot young chefs out there that have all their sleeves of tattoos and that doesn't make you a good chef. Can you actually make a demi glass can you actually brunoise? Do you know what concasse means? You know, things like this. Um, so I really strongly believe in the fundamentals and um, uh, connecting with the mentor, which ACF has a ton of resources for mentorship and like Chef Shop said, apprenticeship. And um, once you're on that path, once I was on that path, I knew I was in the right place. And it directly uh, impacts in a positive way your earning of capabilities. So you know, you may make X at the level of an executive chef, but once you get your certification, you are able to command more money. You know, it, it sets your value. So um, I think it, it covers many facets and um, it, it keeps you, um, keeps me wanting to learn, being in that forever student um, place in my, in my head. And, and again, wanting to give back, which uh, I think is in our culinary code too, is that you know, you give back what was, was given to you. So it, it hits a lot of really positive spots. There's nothing negative about certification. Great. Thank you so much for your, your comments, Chef Burroughs. Those You're welcome. Are, um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, Chef Garrett, but is there any additional information you'd like to share with the group? Sure, certainly, uh, Dr. Harriet. I, I'll, I'll be brief. Um, so I think the chefs did, and, and enormous service in, in outlining the uh, perspectives as well as the you know the additives of certification but for me I'm actually in, engaged in the certification process right now so um, learning you know and everything that they said rings so true um, because I've, I've had to learn in some instances a hard a difficult route um, as well as an easier route because of my mentors but um, Chef Shop mentioned investment and Chef Burroughs mentioned commitment. Both of those, you know, uh, attributes are vitally important um, in terms of reaching a certification. But I would like to add something else in terms of initiative. You know, there has to be a want to do it. And just like Chef uh, Burroughs mentioned in her previous statement about passion, you know, yeah, you have to have it. You know, it's either you do or you don't. Um, you can't teeter title with it. You know, that old school saying, you know, I'll try. You know, there is no I'll try. It's either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. So um, I think for me, being in this process right now I take the written exam in about a month and the practical soon after um, it has been just a tremendous ride and um, it's challenged me and I think as a young chef it's, it's important to challenge yourself early and often um, really you know define the character of who you like to become in terms of the certification process and um, it rings so true with what Chef Burrow says just on a professional sense um, I recall, you know, the, the job title that I have now at my place of employment, it was extremely competitive, you know, trying to just even get into the position. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of extremely um, talented and highly skilled, you know, uh, other chefs, candidates that were vying for the same position. Uh, I remember simply my, my current boss now, my employer, he simply said to me, he said, Ashton, because of your experiences with the ACF and your ties with the ACF, you know, that's, that's you know, it wasn't the sole reason, but it was a driving factor. Um, and I was wasn't certified at the time, but because they saw that initiative to better myself as a young culinarian, um, you know, distinguish me from the rest of the group. So it definitely 
as an investment, it's an initiative. Um, it's purpose purpose driven. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to be on this journey and, and, and just, you know, continuing the certification process. So for any young chef out there, I employ all of you just to begin, whether it's, you know, on a, on a lower level, you know, I'm 23. Um, I, I have a current management position, but I decided to vie for the certified culinary um, certification just to get a feel for the overall certification process and to learn, you know, this one of my mentors, he mentioned that to me, he said, I should just kind of get your feet wet and then develop yourself, you know, you have time, you know, that, that's the beauty about our industry is that there is time and that there is, you know, an opportunity to develop yourself if you want to develop yourself. So uh, for me personally, being in this journey right now and being someone that's in the front lines and working, trying to reach the prestigious level as Chef Burroughs and as Chef Shop, um, and not necessarily for the title and a chef coat, but really just to let the community know that, you know, that Chef Ashton Garrett is, is you know, about his craft and he cares deeply about the community, culinary community, and wants to inspire others to be in the in the certification process as well. Thank you, Chef Garrett. I really appreciate your comments because you're giving us um, the student perspective from the lens of someone that's going through the experience now. And, you know, as an educator, I'm always driven by um, what the school should be doing, what's next. And certainly it's driven by uh, industry and industry expectations, but it's also driven by student interest and student perspective. And um, I found your remarks to be very uh, motivational and Thank I you. hope they are for our attendees as well. Thank you for sharing. I'd, I'd like to just um, jump onto that really, really quickly. Um, sure. Chef Ashton, I think that's why um, we see him um, growing so quickly. He's in the spotlight. He has, I love the statement that um, he could easily try to certify up a little bit. Um, starting from the bottom, building a strong foundation, those basics, mm. um, and not trying to just cross the finish line with the trophy of, I'm an executive chef now, truly builds a, a better journey and a stronger culinary on the outside and, and, and cherishing those moments. Um, I respect your um, uh, mindset on that so much, Chef. Mm. Um, that, that's truly what we need out there. Enjoy the process, build strong fundamentals, it's, it's like being a musician. If you understand how to um, play your instrument with great precision and expertise, then you can sing the song that you have in your soul and your heart. And that's the same with a culinarian. Just to jump to, I like to cook, to uh, go on some food TV, to I'm a chef now, um, is a shallow kind of journey. Some make it, some don't, but building those building blocks, those fundamentals and enjoying the journey um, and that's why, you're, that's why we're seeing so much of Ashton out there. People want to employ him. They want to hear from him. Um, and um, Chef, just keep doing what you're doing. Man. Chef, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> that's great. Great feedback. I'd like to now ask uh, Jeff, how is poor learning exchange supporting continuing success in attaining of the attainment of industry credentials? Um, yeah, thanks. Um, well, core learning exchange, we, we think of uh, CTE programming as being sort of a lifelong journey. Um, and we believe that the way to kind of get people to track into successful programs is to really have a, an awareness of the community. And, uh, and so we believe that you know, a really well-designed program for CTE starts with a labor market analysis to get, you know, where are the jobs for the students that are gonna be in high school now? And uh, what are the kinds of qualifications that employers in those jobs are looking for? And so that's really our, we kind of you know reverse engineer from that point. It's like, okay, there are gonna be some great jobs in the middle skill field for students that are in high school. What are the steps that you need to do in, you know, what are the programming, oper programming requirements in high school? Um, that you need to offer and that will lead to these industry recognized credentials that are recognized of employers that lead to jobs. Well, that needs to kind of back that up. You, you know, people just don't kind of understand these things in ninth and 10th grade. You have to kind of go all the way back to middle school and really um, begin this awareness of your own skills and aptitudes um, and be able to really do a, an assessment of, you know, what makes a, a student tick, what's going to engage them and then open them up and give them opportunities to do career exploration, to have, you know, conversations like this, you know, to, to meet inspiring chefs might inspire a young middle schooler 
to think, well, maybe that's something for me. Um, and so uh, we think that a successful program is really one that creates a pipeline of students, opens their awareness, creates more opportunities in the high school and community college, and really kind of guides you into a lifelong learning process where, you know, you like, like Chef Ashton, it's, it's incremental steps. You're always, you're, you know, it's a lifelong learning journey, but a lot of these skills um, that one needs in order to have that mindset about, oh, I'm going to keep progressing. I'm going to, I'm a lifelong learner. I want to build these stackable kinds of credentials to kind of keep improving my um, outcome, my outcome and my, my um, career aspirations. Um, you know, our goal really is to you know, be able to match those kind of programs that culminate in the jobs that, uh, you know, that, and, and as, as you said, Shayla, it's, it's a two way street. It's, it's sort of what industry wants and what students are interested in. And that's sort of the magic connection right there. Absolutely. You know, we have over 400 uh, business partners specifically at our school. And the reason they're here is because when they want to come interview our students, the first question they actually uh, see on the students' uh, resumes and the questions they ask are, what industry uh, recognized credentials have you earned? Because it gives our students a leg up on uh, students that unfortunately weren't exposed to CTE, career tech ed, had an opportunity to go to a vocational school. And now if you're competing for a job um, from someone else in high school or even college that don't have these credentials, um, they certainly uh, open the door for opportunities that because of um, the industries, industries knowing that this is something that uh, they're looking for for future employees. And it's a, a stamp of approval that you can assure that they've mastered these particular skill sets uh, as they attain the various certifications in the culinary field. So the next question I have uh, for the chefs is, is something that's probably on everybody's minds. Uh, has the demand for culinarians changed pre and post uh, COVID? And where do you see the industry uh, going uh, now that you know more and more of our, our um, country, people in our country are receiving the vaccinations, uh, governors are lifting um, many of the restrictions, restaurants are opening and, and so forth. Um, and we're curious to know where you think the culinary is, um, where that might change and the impact COVID has had on the industry. I can share from a uh, club perspective. Um, I can go after you, Chef. <laughs> um, I am blessed and feel so grateful to be at Hickory Hills Country Club um, in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, this whole year, really, we changed obviously services uh, from in dining to to goes to kind of reading yourself every week. Um, but now that we're um, lifting restrictions and, and like you say, opening back up, I feel like um, being in a private member owned country club is a, is, was the best place to be during this year. It wasn't driven by tourism. It wasn't driven by, um, you know, uh, mayors saying you can't have to shut your doors. I mean, none of that, none of those things applied in, in our situation. And um, we were able to, to work just as hard, just as many hours. Um, so I would encourage, you know, people to perhaps look at those opportunities um, for stability in their careers and, and to have a job. Um, I guess that just really struck me with, with this, um, this strange year that we're trying to wrap up, I hope. Surely we are at this point. Um, but where I live and my, my experience has been that being in a club was the best place to be during the pandemic. Right. I, I have to feed my members. I need to feed them nutritious, healthy food and, right. and uh, keep them smiling. And that's, that's what I did and my team did. That's great. Certainly uh, hope is uh, very much connected to the beautiful spring weather. And uh, it's wonderful. We're actually, we've been in hybrid since uh, uh, hybrid learning model since September, mm -hmm. but uh, we are announcing to our families tomorrow, we're going back fully in person um, starting in May. Congratulations, and, uh, that's awesome. Are, 
are thrilled about that. It's so hard, um, you know, our, our students want to be here at school being connected and certainly the social emotional aspect is uh, really important for adolescent development. Mm -hmm. Chef? Sure, certainly. Um, and for, for me, honestly, uh, before, you know, pre-COVID, I should say, um, the one thing I really admire and appreciate about our industry, you know, the culinary and hospitality industry is just the resourcefulness, adaptability, and resiliency. Um, I think that, you know, we exhibit, excuse me, exhibit on many levels, um, you know, whether it's small mom, mom and pop to private dining um, at Chef Burroughs is her current industry to more of maybe a robust or corporate, um, you know, entity. It's just, you know, the adaptability and resiliency. So I think pre-COVID, you know, as we were transitioning into that model um, where a lot of different businesses were changing up their models and business plans and, and that sort of fashion, um, really just, you know, networked uh, us together and, and really just brought us together even more so. So I think from a perspective moving forward, what does our current industry look like on um, the beauty that you know, my vantage point as a young culinarian um, is to see is, is more of an innovative approach um, to see different industries actually arise within our culinary industry, whether it's, you know, ghost kitchens or more of a, an online platform now, um, or even more of a, a seasonal cuisine starting to arise. So different in, in, industries. Um, and I think that is vitally important where, you know, certification comes into play because I think even more so now than ever, um, certifying that you are, you know, a, a chef that has made it through, quote unquote, you know, this, this struggle, if you will, um, and is still cares so deeply about our industry to the point where, you know, you're willing to continue on and, you know, foster an education, foster a business plan, um, even more so, and an innovative approach is, is vitally important. So for me, personally, um, and I, I think other call and young culinarians can see this as well, uh, more of an innovative approach to kind of move forward, whether it's from an app, an online perspective, or even, you know, a takeout, you know, whatever the case may be, entrepreneurial. Um, so it's, it's definitely developing a new approach. Great. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll wrap it up with that question. Um, for us, um, I own a, a offsite catering company in, in addition to full-time teaching. And we're in our 20th year, a uh, very diverse portfolio. We do some manufacturing canteens, music industry, backstage feedings, festivals, um, and then social weddings. Um, we came back from a um, trip um, overseas to self-quarantine, which mm -hmm. felt great. Two weeks off, of, it was kind of joyful. And in that two weeks, we watched about $800,000 of bookings evaporate, um, mm -hmm. which was terrifying. Um, yeah. And so watching all my friends um, on Facebook and seeing what was going on, um, um, as Chef Burrow said, uh, country clubs seem to be holding on to their employees, um, healthcare, assisted living, very important. And we took this approach that we are, I think cooks are kind of first responders, especially when something like this goes on, people need to cook. So um, I was a very just, horrified just had a horrible feeling of watching all my colleagues across the nation being let go being furloughed um and to me that that felt really wrong so um we um invest in our employees and we have them on a track of acf certification that's how they get hired that's how they get promoted um we pay for that every cent of it their membership they're practicing and other continued education so we have a lot invested in our employees and we felt that we weren't going to let them go. Um, and that burden fell on our shoulders and we've got a considerable hole to dig out of right now. But what we did over that time was um, we banded together. We worked on our own education. We picked up some um, additional certifications um, and we got creative. And I think through that creativity, we've created a couple of new product lines that are going to stick with us. Um, and the important thing is we survived. Um, the soundbite I'd like to just bring to everybody's attention if it's not when the pandemic hit and all of a sudden restaurants and buffets were public enemy number one um the first thing i thought was really we're just now thinking about the safe handling of food america is just <laughs> trying to connect the dots that what we're doing behind the kitchen door is safe or not and i would throw out there that if anybody hopefully um was best prepared for this, it would be our, our educated, certified professional culinarians out there 
um, working in the restaurants, hotels, assisted living facilities, clubs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the disconnect is, it, is what we're talking about right now, I think. So I'm hopeful that as this industry redefines itself moving forward, the American public cares a little bit more about who's on the other side of the, of the um, kitchen door and are they certified or are they just somebody off the street? So I'm hopeful that this is, will help bolster um, certification and professionals in the kitchen because there's not much more of an intimate communion between human beings. Um, you know, your dentist, your OBGYN, your um, primary care physician. Um, and, and what we do, we would never imagine letting any of those other professions um, get that close to our body without verifying that they had the skills to do that and weren't just good at it and walked in off the street for an employer. Um, so um, it, it, it was a tough ride. I think there's a lot of um, mental health to talk about out there in our profession and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of hate being thrown back and forth um, from adults that have differing viewpoints. And I would just say that, you know, just like cooking, um, diverse viewpoints, diverse flavors, diversity um, is an important thing. I don't want to be in a room full of me. I don't want to be cooking with a bunch of people that are just like me. And um, it's important, I believe, for us to seek out our true self and our true calling in life, who we are. But it's also important to um, create space for those around us to be their true selves and speak their true voice, mm -hmm. even when it doesn't agree with our ideology. Um, that's where we learn. That's where learning happens, when those conversations can happen. And this last year was brutal, um, politically especially. Um, friends on both sides of the spectrum, and I've watched them just behave horribly to each other. It made me question their, their um, I don't know, their, their, their will and their um, stature as a, as a human being. We are all human beings. So mm -hmm. let's connect. We have more things to connect um, in common than we do um, that that are differences from us, and right. and I think right. you know we're we're afraid of what we don't know in all of life and learning and whatever. It's the same with our human connections. Uh, if we don't agree with somebody, we're going to be fearful of that. And the only way to break that fear down is to walk towards that person, have those conversations, and build bridges. We don't have to get an apartment together, but we for surely can provide civil space for each other to to right. have a conversation. Yeah, my husband loves to to uh, cook, and um, so many meals when we bring it to the dining room table, he says, "Food is love." Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I, I love that, and 100%. I feel his love every night over dinner, and it's wonderful um, to be able to share a meal, and it it, it welcomes um, the friendship, the collegiality, the love, and the wonderful conversations of uh, sharing a meal together. So thank you for those remarks. Um, the next question I have is, what does it mean to be future ready chefs? It, I'm, I'll jump in and then I'll be quiet. Um, it <laughs> means be ready. Don't wait, we see this a lot, especially in certification. Um, somebody may not be certified and they're up for a job that requires it. And now all of a sudden they have an interest in it. And quite frankly, that's probably too late um, to start the process to be ready for that job. So I always encourage at all level of culinarian, don't wait till you need to be ready, be ready. Um, and that means working um, continuously as you go through. Um, time is gonna pass either way. So walk slowly towards the goal instead of trying to sprint at the last minute with haste and, and um, lack of detail for that goal. So I would always say, work on your next certification. You're gonna need it somewhere down there and don't put it off and let it be a stressful last minute process. Right. Thank you. Great words of wisdom there. I, I definitely wholeheartedly agree uh, with Chef, uh, just in terms of, you know, don't procrastinate. And uh, like he mentioned, you know, be ready. Um, my, one of my mentors always says to me, and I've said this, you know, quote on, on different platforms uh, as well as, you know, uh, it's better to have an opportunity 
um, and, and be prepared for one than to have an opportunity, than to not have an opportunity and not be prepared at all. Um, so just in that instance, you know, learn, learn as much as possible. You know, you have 24 hours in a day, you know, use it, whether it's just reading books or reaching out to a mentor or reaching out to a chef that is certified and asking him, picking his brain, you know, who has done it, you know, whether it's on a rudimentary level or more of a, uh, more robust or CEC or CCA or whatever the case may be, just continue learning. You know, I think the only limitation is yourself and you only slow yourself down. So always be ready, you know, stay ready. That way you don't have to get ready um, and, and just be active in that forefront that, you know, our, our industry is always changing. It's always evolving and it's going to, you know, I think in the last year or two, it's changed so much. Um, and, you know, change is, is scary. Change can be, you know, fearful, um, but at the same time, it's necessary. And it's, you know, change is, is necessary for that reason for growth. Um, and to be able to grow, you have to be ready for that growth as well. So definitely what, what I, I wholeheartedly agree with Chef Shop and just being ready. Great. I'd like to jump in just a, a comment uh, about. Please, Jeff. Some of the, uh, the, the previous comment about sort of the impact of COVID. And, and some of the response was you got to get creative and you got to kind of, you know, invent new products, uh, have a mindset that is adaptable. Um, so I think there's a lot, um, you know, some, some um, wisdom here is, you know, to be a Renaissance kind of a person where you may need, you know, your, your primary skill is, is, is uh, culinary, however, um, it doesn't hurt to know digital marketing and how to make a website and to be an entrepreneur and have business skills and um, kind of know what a QuickBooks looks like and what HR policies are. I mean, there's a lot of uh, kind of foundational skills that cross cut all careers um, and they're basic literacies that, um, you know, I think uh, would complement any career and uh, and and really the, the broader your skills are and the more the more exposure you have to the broadest kind of kind of different kinds of skills that you might be able to use um, the more creative you can be with your solutions and I you know I think there's been some very interesting you know I mean here in, I live in Boulder and you know some of our restaurants went from you know having you know paper receipts to you know, switching their whole business to be all touchless, um, you know, payment. And there's been a lot of change in a year and a lot of new skills had to be learned. And, and the people that were facile and more adaptive did better than those that didn't. Mm -hmm. my, my, my thoughts about, you know, the idea of, um, you know, it's not just the culinary skills. There's going to be a mindset and a set of basic literacies that um, I think will help everyone be more successful in any career. Great. I apologize, I'm at school. So if you've been hearing the uh, school bells, that means the students are passing probably to lunch. <laughs> um, is there any other comments? Otherwise, uh, I'll ask Jackie if there's any uh, questions in the, the comment section as well. Um, she, I just wanna say one quick thing about future ready chefs. Um, Please do. If I could, um, I guess, I would, what I would say, I, I like the uh, focus that, that Jeffrey had on um, more pragmatic, like math computation and understanding food cost and um, yeah. you know, menu development and things like that. Those are really important things and that engages your creativity as well as uh, sensibilities and business practices. But um, understanding the scope of um, you know, Augusta Scoffier and classical cuisine to more modernistic um, cuisine um, and continually you know, reading, um, engaging your brain, um, never let up, never just be satisfied with where you're at. I think that um, that is your future. You know, I, I'm a future ready chef too, still, you know, where I'm at, I believe, because I don't know everything. Um, I have, you know, admiration for my mentorship um, and people that I aspire to be. So I would encourage young culinarians and just all of us to to continue on that path of learning because that that is that prepares us for our futures and, and, and our readiness as well. That's wonderful. Great words to live by, that's for sure, Chef. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> right. Just do it. Uh, yeah. So Jackie, are there any uh, questions in the comment section that you'd like to pose to the panelists? Sure, yes. Well, thank you very much. Um, and there have been some really great questions. Um, I'll just limit it to, you know, probably two in the interest of time. 
but I'm wondering if some of the panelists might be able to speak to what are some of the skills that you're looking for in entry level cooks um, that might want to join your organization? Would any of the chefs like to take that? Chef Chef? Yeah, I'd love it. Um, great question. And one that I've, I've shared this opinion with our students more than they probably want to hear. Um, I'm looking for skills of awareness, attention, a want to be there, a want to show up, just like um, a basketball player. I want somebody that wants to shoot the ball. They don't have to score. I'll help them score. I want somebody that's not afraid to shoot the ball and, and wants to be there. The, the soft skills that um, we tend to discount um, are critically important to me. Great. Jackie, other questions? Or other would the other chefs like to add to that? It looks like we have lost Jackie for a moment. This is Matt, the producer. <laughs> Where you did only, she go? You only hear Get me step back. in when something goes wrong. So something, you know, this is Zoom. It's live, and this happens. Right. This, I'll jump in and uh, get the next Q&A rolling. This is for Chef Ashton Garrett from Nathan Neblett. Chef Garrett, what advice would you give to a young culinarian who is now starting to work in this field? Sure, great question. Um, really just practice, 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 practice. Um, you know, that I spent close to three months outside of culinary school, um, really when I was, you know, still learning and just practice knife cuts. Um, because whatever you practice is whatever you progress and whatever you, you know, improve upon. And, you know, it certainly helps because as you become more comfortable, you become more expedient. And in a kitchen operation or even just a culinary operation, experience is, is really, you know, the name of the game as well as efficiency. So really just practice and develop those soft skills. Um, as Chef Burroughs mentioned, uh, as well as um, uh, Jeff uh, mentioned as well, you know, those soft skills, learning how to menu plan, learning how to develop. These are things that are going to take time, incremental steps. Um, but the more you're comfortable and the more that you work on them, uh, the more you'll develop, you know, it'll be second nature. You know, a chef might ask you, they ask, you know, um, how many quarts are in a gallon? Just name it like, just like that, you know? So, so things like that, you know, that you work on outside of the actual practicality in the kitchen is definitely going to help you out. So my advice to you, definitely practice, um, seek great mentorship right now while you're early and often, uh, really, you know, find somebody that is willing to kind of foster your growth and take you under their wing and, and not necessarily tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Sometimes the greatest, you know, information is being accountable. Um, you know, as a young chef, it's so easy to get lost into your, your own ego and lost into your own self-awareness and to have somebody say, Ashton, you know, you're not there yet. You know, you're showing great signs, but you're not there yet. So let's slow it down. Let's, let's do a different approach to actually get to where you need to be. And I think, you know, that level of humility is what really, excuse me, is what differentiates great chefs from tremendous and excellent chefs. So um, really just, you know, practice, practice, practice. You can't get enough of practice. And like every panelist has said, you know, learning is the name of the game and just continue to move on. Great. Great point. And Check Dr. Harity, I'm going to say it's 11.59. So it is looking like we're time getting close to wrapping up. Uh, since Jackie's not here, I'll again step in, but I'm going to pass it over to you for any Thank final you. thoughts. Yeah. So if you're interested in becoming a future ready chef, we encourage you to visit acfchefs.org and we'll drop that link right into the, the chat. And you might wanna consider becoming a member. If you're interested in, in bringing ACF courses to your middle or high school, visit corelearningexchange.com or get in touch with Jeff Katzman at support at core-lx.com. And that too is in the Dropbox or schedule a demo and we've attached the, the link so that you can receive a, a demo from Core Learning. Lastly, we invite you to share this webinar recording with others on social media. We'll be receiving, you'll be receiving the link in the next several days. I really wanna take a, a moment and um, thank our, our chefs. I'm so impressed uh, with your work and all your accomplishments and I look forward to Seeing you on TV, I look forward to hearing more about uh, your incredible journeys that you're on and really appreciate you sharing um, so much uh, gems of important uh, wisdom, knowledge, and, and next steps for those 
uh, future culinary um, culinarians, as you say, in your world. Thank you Thank very you, much. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Dr. Herity. Thank you, Dr. Herity. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Great panel. Thank you so much. Bye. And Jackie, we welcome you back. This is Matt, if you want to wrap it up and hit this out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm unfrozen. Um, but a, a big virtual round of applause again as we thank today's panelists and, and Dr. Herity. Um, we appreciate you taking the time, all of you, to share your knowledge today. And we hope to see you at our next upcoming webinar, which would be focused on plant-based cuisine for healthcare and senior dining presented in collaboration with the Association of Nutrition and Food Service Professionals on April 7th. If you're interested in attending this demonstration, uh, don't wait to register. Seats are limited to 1,000 and it is getting close to capacity. So you will receive the link to register um, in the follow-up with the recording of this email. But for more information and culinary news, please check out our website, wearechefs.com. And again, on behalf of American Culinary Federation and ACF National Office, thank you all for the opportunity uh, to speak with you. Thank you for joining us today. And we hope to see you real soon, maybe at ACF National Convention, August 2nd through 5th in Orlando. Thank you all. <laughs>